Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, and before I start driving this vehicle, I would like to solve this issue here. Now, that might just be the nature of the beast of these tire carriers that are only have points of mounting at the very bottom. You, I mean, there may always be some of that. I don't like it. I'd like to get it under control a little bit. And my first thought was just to put some kind of rubber bumper in here but I tried a couple things and if it's very stiff, as soon as it starts doing one of those, it doesn't contact and then just starts banging against it. Or it's got, it makes it too hard to close. So I thought, well, how about a shock absorber? So my first thought was some kind of shock absorber for an RC car, but they just don't have anywhere near the spring pressure and the mounting eyes you know, the holes to mount are usually something tiny, like three millimeter. I looked at the go-kart ones, and the go-kart ones are just too long. I've only got about six inches to work with in here, six, seven inches. And um, some of that I have to have with the mount, and I'm still going to have to have a rubber bumper on it. So then I ran across a bicycle shock absorber, and that was this. Now, this isn't the spring that it came with. It came with this spring on it and this spring I can stand on it and not budge it so I think it's something like 500 600 pound spring because it's a bicycle you know it's meant to go like up under the seat and then it has the swing arm sticking back from it so it has a long arm you know 18 inch long arm on it maybe 12 to 18 inches so it needs a really stiff spring so I found this spring down at the local hardware store and I don't know if I can do it while I'm holding the camera, but this spring I can compress. It has still has more pressure than I think I wanted. I was hoping for around 15 or 20 pounds, and this is around 30. But um, I'm going to make a little thing, and I'm going to mount that back in there, actually in between these four posts, and it's going to stick back with a rubber bumper on it. I think I'd like it to compress about... I don't know, an inch maybe? I got, what do I got here? I got at least two inches of travel, I think. Uh, maybe not two, one and a half maybe. And you can just compress that when you pull the tailgate shut. And these tailgates are really, really stout. I mean, I've had a full size refrigerator sitting on the tailgate on this vehicle. So they're very stout. And for those of you saying that's a stupid way to solve it, well, that's how Jeep solved it originally on the three-point mount one. Actually, it wasn't three-point mounts. It mounted in two locations on the other side, and then it had the support retainer over here, but they had a rubber bumper on it, and you can see in the previous video, I'll put the previous, a link to the previous videos up above. They had it pressing against the sheet metal at the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a little way to hold this and a place, a little thing to hold a rubber bumper on, and we're gonna see if this solves that because i don't like that okay so let me show you what i got this is what i made my somewhat rube goldbergish device and what this is going to do is this is going to go back in here like this this wants to swing closed on me that's going to go back in there and you can see i scraped some paint off so i can get a weld in there that's going to go back in like that, and it's going to be just about flush with that. Sticks out maybe a quarter of an inch. So that means I need about a three-quarter of an inch piece of rubber between here before it contacts the tailgate. So I'm going to try and figure out some way to make it adjustable, because I want to go about half an inch into the um, travel of that spring. So I'm going to get that tacked on first, and... Yeah, you know what? What am I gonna do here? I might, I might drill this and put a nut, tack a nut on the back of it to give me something that I so I'll have some adjustment. And I might do that first. Thinking about it. Okay, so there it is, welded in. And for those of you who noticed, yes, I did weld these cuts up that I made to get that bend in the way I wanted it because I just wasn't having a luck with the bender and no matter how I hit it, I wasn't getting the bends where I wanted it. So I wound up putting cuts in it to get the bends. So I welded them up. I did punch the hole and put the nut in, 
so in case I do need some kind of adjustment mechanism, it's in place because it was easy to do while this was off. And if I had to do it later, I'd have to take it back apart to get it off, and I don't want to do that. I don't think I'm going to use it, but it's there if I need it. And I have my, um, can't push it with one thumb. The spring is just a little too stiff. But I think my adjustment mechanism is just going to be the thickness of my rubber piece. And you know what? I've got a 3D printer and TPU filament, so I can make that any size that I want. And I think I'm just going to glue it on there. That's going to be my first thing I'm going to try. And, um, yeah, I don't see any reason why that won't work. Okay, after a bit of trials and tribulations, I have my piece printed. This is just blue TPU filament. And if you guys aren't into 3D printing, I've got a lot of videos on 3D printing. You can go back and look. But this is just blue TPU filament with two walls and a 15% infill of Cross 3D. I put a little bit of a curve on it because my piece back there has a little bit of curve where I bent it. So I don't have any really scientific way to measure this. I've tightened down here to where I would normally be if I was going to drive the vehicle. I'm just going to smack it and let's just kind of count to see how long it bobbles. I got about six seconds out of that. It, it moves pretty easily. So I'm going to put the piece in. I'm probably going to have to put the camera down to do this. But um, I'll try it without doing that. And... So the piece is just going to go right here. And I'm going to glue it on. But for now, I'm just going to kind of See if I can just hold it there in place. That's about where I want it, I think. A little over, maybe. Right about there. I'll do the same thing. I can already see it didn't, it didn't bobble as much when I shoved that closed. We'll see about what this does. I mean, there is no shock dampening on this. Like, you know, it would have oil or something like that. It goes another time or two. To be where I had it before and um, let's see if it's, act it's actually moving the spring yeah it's actually moving the spring in and out all right so let's see what we got oh yeah that didn't even go for three seconds yeah that's that cut it in half or less and that is absolutely moving that spring in both directions yeah, so, I mean, short of putting something on it that actually has oil damping, and that would have to be like a shock absorber, that would have to be connected at each end. It couldn't just be pressing up against it because it would just hammer it. So, I mean, yeah, that's a lot better. I'm happy with it. I'm going to glue it on there, and I'm going to call it good. kind of has to go up at a bit of an angle, but I'm not worried about that. So, yeah, there you go. I'm pretty pleased with it. Anyway... Thanks for watching this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.